We're talking a lot about holiday traditions this week of all types, and for many families, college football is a big part of the festivities. But for one UNM football player, tradition goes much deeper. A member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, junior offensive lineman Teton Saltis, works among native communities struggling with suicide, often at a rate higher than any other racial or ethnic group. NMAF correspondent Antonio Gonzalez introduces us to the remarkable young man on a mission. At 6'6", 284 pounds, redshirt junior Teton Saltis is a force to be reckoned with on the field. The 21-year-old also excels in the classroom as an athletic scholar and is a self-taught musician. But it's his work outside of sports and academics he's most proud of. You know where I come from on the reservation. One of the most fundamental beliefs that we have is, is, is children are sacred. And if we don't do a good job in raising strong and passionate children, then you're doing a disservice to your, yourself, your people, and, and ultimately this country. And that's been instilled within me from my mother, who has been instilled with, within her from my grandmother, and, and so on and so forth. Whether it's making rounds on Capitol Hill with Save the Children Network, like or back at his home in South Dakota on the Pine Ridge Reservation as a life awareness mentor with the Bear Project, he's a tireless advocate for children. <laughs> Bear Project stands for Be Excited About Reading, so it's an acronym. Initially, it was a literacy mentorship program. We would go around the reservation up there and teach families and children how to read. You know, not just the children, but there's also like their parents will be reading at like a second or third grade level. We actually have this bear bus, we called it. There's an old, you know, yellow school bus that we uh, convert into a mobile library. So you walk in there and there's computers and carpet and beanbag chairs. And we would take that and drive it around the reservation. 2.2 million square acres. We would mentor students, have after-school programs, education-based. Eventually, there was a suicide epidemic that hit within the mid, mid to late 2000s. And so we kind of changed our platform from education and literacy to life awareness and suicide awareness, suicide prevention. And that's kind of the work that we do now. The Bear Project works to educate students, families, and the community about suicide through theatrical skits. The group travels on and off the reservation to schools, community centers, and anywhere they're invited. The actors are often suicide survivors. Some struggle more than others. You know, suicide doesn't discriminate. And so we actually perform skits about life. Regardless of what, what's going on with the skit, there's always a central theme that we, that we go through. You know, there's a community in disarray. There's a community plagued with violence. And, Suicide, you know, domestic abuse, uh, substance abuse, an entire community that's just wild, going crazy. The plays tackle everyday issues Native youth face. They don't shy away from some of the tough realities of life, including broken homes and substance abuse. Teton says the message is clear. Anyone can make a difference. If there's one person in your community that is willing to come out of their comfort zone, it makes it all One of my favorite skits where the person who does it, who, who is that person that, that brings people together, the person falls to their knees because they're so weak from all that they've done for the community. And as you see in the background, the community comes together and they lift the person up and they become the strength and the backbone of that person. All it takes is one person. You know, that's kind of our message is all it takes is one person to stand up and to create change, to impact people in, in a positive way. For Teton, that person is his grandmother, Tiny DeCroix, who navigates people through thoughts of suicide and is often the one to help in the aftermath when someone takes their own life. Reservations in particular, incredibly beautiful places, especially where I'm from. That's my home. I love it. But we do have our problems. You know, I can spot off all the statistics and whatnot, but I always tell people we're more than, we're more than statistics. You know, we're, at, we're people. We, we're living, breathing human beings at have our problems just like everybody else, but we, we do acknowledge that there is huge issues. At least twice in the last decade, Oglala Lakota officials declared a state of emergency due to a rash of suicides. Teton sees similar problems in New Mexico as he does at home. It's a delicate issue in Indian country. You know, you could push it aside all you want. You can not talk about it, but the problem is going to continue to persist unless we do talk about it unless we do work to, to create change. More communities have 
opened up and realized that it is a huge issue. And more and more communities out there are starting to, to help prevent suicide, which again, they'll bring us in or they'll bring in uh, other suicide groups or life awareness groups. A lot of the teachers, uh, counselors, I mean, everybody, they're, they're starting to train them in signs of suicide. Teton sees his advocacy linked to his role on and off the football field. He says being in the spotlight helps elevate his effort to help people and be a voice for children and the voiceless. After the UNM academic senior leaves college sports, he has aspirations as an attorney and in politics and continue to give back to his community on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. I didn't come from a, a home of, of money or wealth, you know, of, of abundance. Um, but I came from a very educated home uh, with, and I had a great support system. Not a lot of kids have that back where I'm from. And that's really the difference between me and them is, you know, people always ask me, how come you made it out and, and they didn't? And I said, I, I guess I was just lucky to have a great family who really, really cared to, to, to instill that within me. And for those that, you know, where I come from, they, there isn't a lot of people that that do make it out like that, that, um, or if they do make it out, they don't, they don't come back, you know. And so for a lot of the young people to see that, there's somebody just like me who, who grew up just like me, who's lived where I lived, who's had similar experiences to what I'm experiencing. For them to go out and, and do it and to, and to make it off the reservation, for me, is very powerful because we don't have enough positive role models in that can that can really show our children a better way. For New Mexico in Focus, I'm Antonia Gonzalez. And we have more good news to share about Saltis. He was recently named a semifinalist for the Werfel Trophy, awarded to the player who best combines exemplary community service with athletic and academic achievement. He'll find out if he won on December 10th.